ஹாய் காய்ஸ் வெல்கம் டு நம்ம கேபிஎஸ்சி அகாடமி கர்நாடகா எக்கனாமிக் சர்வே வீடியோ சீரீஸ் வி ஆர் டிஸ்கஸிங் வித் ஆர் சாப்டர் த்ரீ விச் டீல்ஸ் வித் அக்ரிகல்ச்சர் அலீட் செக்டர்ஸ் அண்ட் ஃபுட் செக்யூரிட்டி இன் ஆர் ப்ரீவியஸ் வீடியோஸ் வி ஹேவ் டிஸ்கஸ்ட் அபவுட் அக்ரிகல்ச்சர் அண்ட் ஹார்டிகல்ச்சர் இன் த ப்ரெசன்ட் வீடியோ லெட் அஸ் டிஸ்கஸ் அபவுட் அதர் அலீட் செக்டர்ஸ் ஆஃப் அக்ரிகல்ச்சர் அண்ட் லெட் அஸ் கன்க்ளூட் த டிஸ்கஷன் வித் ஃபுட் செக்யூரிட்டி லெட் அஸ் பிகின் லெட் அஸ் பிகின் த டிஸ்கஷன் வித் அனிமல் ஹஸ்பண்ட்ரி அனிமல் ஹஸ்பண்ட்ரி இஸ் த சயின்டிஃபிக் ப்ராசஸ் ஆஃப் ரேரிங் அனிமல்ஸ் The livestock sector plays a vital role in development of rural economy of the state. In Karnataka, majority of the population is dependent on agriculture and allied activities, especially animal husbandry. As per the 19 livestock census, Karnataka has 2.9 crores of livestock and 5.3 crores of poultry population. To provide health care to the animals, and for the improvement and development of breeds of animals various programs are implemented successfully by the department of animal husbandry and veterinary services through its institutional network now let us study the importance of animal husbandry in karnataka in karnataka animal husbandry and livestock sector has been playing a significant role in rural economy during 2017-18 the share of animal husbandry in the gross state domestic product of agriculture and allied activities was 20.36% in buffalo's milk production india ranks first in the world similarly in cow milk production india took second rank and during 2017-18 karnataka state ranked 11th among the indian states more details is given in this table moving on this table provides the details about livestock and poultry statistics in karnataka now let us see a quick fact about animal health and veterinary services this table provides the details about developmental activities of animal husbandry and veterinary services Now let us continue the discussion and let us see few schemes that are being implemented in animal husbandry sector central schemes include rashtriya gokul mission national mission on bovine productivity naf double c funded project under climate change now let us discuss about state sector initiatives in animal husbandry sector First of all let us discuss about Karnataka Sheep and Wool Development Corporation This corporation is implementing sheep wool improvement scheme in coordination with the Central Wool Development Board Jodhpur Under this scheme there is a subsidy initiatives under which sheep or goat units are given to beneficiaries who are members of Karnataka Sheep and Wool Development Corporation Limited In Karnataka state there are five sheep breeding farms under Karnataka Sheep and Wool Development Corporation The next scheme implemented by Karnataka government is Suraksha Yojane or Anugraha Koduge for shepherds Under this scheme ex gratia will be provided to shepherds to overcome the loss due to death of sheep and goats Now let us look at poultry development in Karnataka state. State of Karnataka has 156.70 million layers and 275.60 million broilers which produce 412.30 million eggs and 81,828 tons of chicken meat. respectively there are 24 poultry farms functioning under the department of animal husbandry and veterinary sciences for development of poultry in the state the major developmental activities are breeding and rearing of giriraja parent stock and the supply of day old chicks to the farmers the following departmental poultry farms are producing day old giriraja chicks with the facility of breeding of parent giriraja birds now we must discuss about piggery development 
In the state of Karnataka, there are five big breeding stations involved in various activities. Among other activities, these stations are engaged in production and distribution of pure breed piglets, training and extension services in modern pig rearing to various socio-economic beneficiaries. In the state, most of the unemployed educated youths and farmers are interested in modern pig rearing as a result of which production of good quality of pork and the lifestyle of the pig rearers are being improved. Under Rashtriya Krishi Vikas Yojana scheme, district pig rearers cooperative societies are being established. In the similar lines, Karnataka government has taken up rapid development at various places in Karnataka. Now let us look at feed and fodder development. To mitigate the shortage of green fodder in the state livestock farms, fodder production, fodder seed production and training of farmers are being undertaken with the assistance of State Disaster Relief Fund, Rashtriya Krishi Vikas Yojana, centrally sponsored schemes and calamity relief funds. Now let us look at a quick note. Government of India is extending assistance to states for control of animal diseases through various initiatives. You can go through these initiatives. The next question that arises in animal husbandry is what are the future challenges and constraints in animal husbandry sector? You can write this as a mains question. Economic survey also speaks about Karnataka Milk Federation, the basics of which we have already discussed in Karnataka Geography video series of Nama KPSC Academy. Focus point is Kshira Sanjeevini Women Diary Cooperative Societies. This scheme has been remodeled as KMF Sanjeevini. This scheme aims to purchase milk from farmers, especially women producers directly. Also, women producers get various benefits like they get to know the precise weight of the milk, fat content in the milk, based on which milk price is given. A computer slip would be generated that will facilitate them to know the precise amount to be received per shift each day. Next, we must discuss about fisheries in Karnataka. The basics of fisheries we have already discussed in Nama KPSC Karnataka Geography video series. You can go through that. Karnataka State Fisheries Development Corporation is implementing various schemes for the development of marine fisheries in Karnataka, which include construction of fishing harbors, dredging of fishing harbors and landing centers, along with the above programs, upgradation of fish farms and assistance for fishery requisite and fiberglass coracle programs have been taken up under Rashtriya Krishi Vikas Yojana. Also, there are initiatives for development and maintenance of coastal link roads. And also there is a scheme which is implemented by NABAD for rural infrastructure development relating to marine fisheries. Now, let us see a quick fact about inland fisheries. During 2017-18, the total fish seed produced from different fish seed production centers of department and the private centers was 4,962.25 lakh fry fingerlings. During the year 2017-18, 2,030.72 lakh fish fingerlings were stocked in 3,044 department tanks along with 489.44 lakh fish fingerlings were stocked in 1,796 gram panchayat tanks and they were developed. During the year 2018-19, 2,759 departmental tanks have been developed along with 1,585 gram panchayat tanks. Departmental tanks in 2018-19 have stocked 1,577.83 lakh fish fingerlings and the gram panchayat tanks have stocked 396.23 lakh fish fingerlings. On a total, they have stocked 0.47 lakh metric ton of fish in Karnataka up to November 2018. In this background, Karnataka Fisheries Development Corporation has promoted various initiatives to develop inland fisheries. Now, let us look at fishermen welfare schemes. First of all, there is a group accident insurance scheme. 
under this centrally sponsored group accident insurance scheme the premium amount of rupees 20.27 per fisherman shared equally by state and center has been paid to national federation of fisher cooperative limited new delhi towards insurance coverage of 2.05 lakh fishermen of karnataka state in the similar lines there are initiatives for reimbursement of differential interest to commercial banks and also a distress relief fund the next initiative is matsya ashraya yojane under this scheme provision has been made to provide housing facility to houseless fishermen rupees 1.2 lakh is being given as subsidy to general category fishermen under matsya ashraya scheme to construct the house The subsidy given to beneficiaries belonging to scheduled caste and scheduled tribe is rupees 1.75 lakh to beneficiaries living in rural areas and rupees 2 lakh to the beneficiaries living in the urban areas. Now let us study about Blue Revolution. Blue Revolution is a central government flagship program inaugurated for integrated development and management of fisheries. to bring about a significant growth in the fishery sector in the next 5 years it is being implemented by national fisheries development board this board is taking up various initiatives for the development of fisheries in india here we have given the achievements of blue revolution in india you can go through this so guys those were the details regarding the allied sectors of agriculture Now let us continue the discussion with food security through public distribution system. The public distribution system has evolved as a system of management of scarcity of food grains by its involvement in distribution of food grains at affordable prices. Over the year PDS has become an important part of government's policy for management of food economy in state and in the country it must be noted that PDS is supplemental in nature and is not intended to make available the entire requirement of any of the commodities distributed under it to a household or a section of the society PDS is operated under joint responsibility of central and state government the central government through food corporation of india has assumed the responsibility for procurement storage transportation and bulk allocation of food grains to the state government food grains are distributed through the PDS to the poor at fixed rates throughout the year through fair price shops the operational responsibility including the allocation within state identification of families below poverty line issue of ration cards and supervision of fair price shops rest with the state governments as in other states rice wheat sugar and kerosene oil are distributed through fair price shops in karnataka as well Now let us look at state sector initiatives with respect to food security in Karnataka. First of all, Anna Bhagya Yojane. Anna Bhagya scheme is in force from July 2013 in Karnataka. From the date of implementation of Anna Bhagya Yojane, the beneficiaries of BPL card holders are availing enhanced quantity of food grains. According to the scheme at present BPL family having one member is availing quantity of 10 kg two members 20 kg and three members and above family is availing 30 kg of food grains under anna bhagya scheme up to april 2015 the price of issue of food grains per kg was reduced to rupees 1 Unit system of food grain distribution was introduced from May 2015 onwards. Accordingly, every unit of priority household are distributed with 5 kg of food grains at free of cost. From the year 2017-18, each member of priority household is being distributed 7 kg food grains and Antyodaya Anna Yojana households are given 35 kg of food grains. as discussed earlier 
kerosene is also being provided through fair price shops in karnataka uniform rate for kerosene is introduced throughout the state presently non gas card holders are being distributed 3 liters of kerosene in rural areas card holders with lpg connection who register their willingness to obtain kerosene in their respective gram panchayats are being distributed 1 liter of kerosene every month kerosene is distributed at rupees 30 per liter also kerosene is being allocated for fishing purpose during the fishing season based on the permits issued by the deputy commissioners each permit is entitled to 300 liters of kerosene in the coastal districts of dakshina kannada udupi and uttar kannada the next scheme is padithara khatri scheme this scheme has ensured availability of food grains from the beginning of month and during the entire month as per the scheme the fair price shops are to issue pds commodities from first of every month to card holders and the fair price shops shall function on all days now let us discuss about annabhagya adalat annabhagya adalat has been introduced from 2014 adalats are conducted on 7th of every month near select fair price shops in presence of any government officer these adalats look into various issues pertaining to public distribution systems now let us look at a quick note regarding dasoha initiative the central government provides food grain allocation to the state under other welfare scheme for supply to welfare institutes like old age homes through the soha initiative the food grain allocation is released to states at bpl rates karnataka state from order in 2017 has ordered issue of food grains free of cost to such welfare institutes under the soha scheme accordingly from september 2017 15 kg food grains including 10 kg rice and 5 kg wheat per inmate is being distributed to welfare institutes in the state in addition government of karnataka has taken up various initiatives for computerization of public distribution system in the state the department of food has a digitized database of all ration cards in karnataka public can visit the department website and if they find any ineligible family possessing bpl ration card and other irregularities they can register their opinion also various online services are provided through various centers in addition in order to curb irregularities in the fair price shops electronic weighing come point of sale machines have been provided to fair price shops of karnataka now let us look at mukhyamantri anil bhagya yojana in order to make the state kerosene free and to provide a pure fuel to the households in place of kerosene mukhyamantri anil bhagya scheme has been introduced from 2017 the schemes of the departments like food forest labor and social welfare departments related to providing of lpg connections have been brought together under this scheme for implementation by food department which is the nodal department for the implementation of the scheme now let us look at punar belaku yojana government has issued a general order for implementation of punar belaku scheme since 2017 according to the scheme if any rural ration card holders presently availing 1 liter kerosene expresses their willingness at gram panchayats for rechargeable led bulbs costing rupees 300 they are provided with such bulbs free of cost so guys we are concluding with our discussion before concluding here is a reminder in the description box you shall find the links to download the ebooks of namma kpsc academy So guys thank you for watching if you like the video please like and subscribe namak psc youtube channel for more queries contact us thank you again